Now, Papper people, you know I have a lot of problems with you people. Uh, uh, excuse me, Jocelyn didn't mean to be offensive. Please like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Yes, like and subscribe, but I do have a lot of problems with you people. So the title of this video doesn't lie, it's my true feelings. The AHI reported by your machine is crap. And unfortunately, this is what your doctor is gonna go off of. They're gonna say, hey, your AHI is great. It's phenomenal. You're doing excellent. Meanwhile, you are dragging ass. Not a dragon ass, but you're dragging ass. Uh, that's slang for tired if you're not picking up what I'm laying down. But these AHI numbers on your machine, and this includes my Air app, these are not to be, these are not to be believed. And so let me show you exactly what I'm talking about using some real data from a real patient who said, but Jason, my AHI looks good on the machine. And I said to myself, yeah. let's, let's go, go ahead, ahead and sync, sync the, the audio. audio. Clap, 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 clap. So over here, what I was trying to explain to him is they have an AHI of 0 0.23. Now, if that were totally accurate, if that were actually representing the number of awakenings this person is having per night, they would feel probably pretty great, but it's not. This has nothing to do with the apnea hypopnea index. This has to do with uh, fictitious numbers pulled out of the butthole of the machine. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Every one of these spikes up here is an awakening. Waking up every single one of these. And if we look at it, the window is probably roughly maybe 15 minutes. But in here you can see that there is one arousal, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine awakenings and probably a 15 minute period. I think we can all agree that's a lot. Now, unfortunately, the leak data is being obscured by this box here, but we can still kind of pretty much make out exactly what's going on. A lot of these, there's a flattening. You can actually see a drop right here dropping down. Over here, you see it dropping down. Over here, you see it dropping down. And in the spots where it's not actually dropping down, and I'm talking about the amplitude of the wave itself, there's a lot of flattening occurring, which is indicating a flattening or a decrease in the breathing. So like right here, we're zoomed in. See how some of these waves are nice and popped at the top, upside down U-shape, but then over here, they're like very much collapsed. And then flat, 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 awakening. Now, this isn't being flagged as anything. It's not being flagged as a respiratory effort-related arousal or a hypopnea. According to the machine, they're doing fine, but they're not doing fine. They're waking up a lot. So if you zoom out, really only one of the nine is being flagged as anything. So you actually might be asking yourself at this point, oh, but Jocelyn, oh, what, what does this all mean? Don't believe the AHI number reporting by your My Air app. Don't believe the AHI reported on Sleep HQ. And don't believe the AHI in Oscar. Again, just reporting what the machine is saying it's, it's the AHI is. And if your doctor in the office ever says, yeah, but your AHI looks really good, you can say, well, did you look at the actual waveform within that? And then, of course, you're going to say, oh, uh, uh, no, I, I, I didn't actually. And you're going to say, well, do you mind doing that for me? And when they say, well, these machines are great. They're all FDA approved. You can say, oh, well, that's, that's really great. But check out this video from the Lanky Lefty 27. It's freaking phenomenal. And you can show them exactly what I'm talking about. Tons of arousals in here. And just simply increasing the pressure will resolve these. It'll keep them asleep. It'll keep the airway from collapsing. And everyone at that point will be happy. Now, this goes right along with another video I did, very loosely related. Let's go ahead and get a slightly better background for this next thing I'm about to say. Let's talk about another product that I just did a video on. It's O2 wearables and why they're really not valuable at all as far as tracking sleep because you're gonna get that same, uh, God, I hate this phrase, that same misinformation, the same fake news that you get from the machine reported AHI. O2 wearables are crap. But before we talk about that and do a little comment review, you gotta check out cpapsupplies.com. Friends, now that summer's here, it is a great time to check out cpapsupplies.com. Yes, Lanky's in summer enjoyment mode. Now, while old Lanky here likes to relax quite a bit, there's a few things that makes old Lanky pucker. One is my wife's spending habits. That will get my sphincter very, very tight very, very quickly. But the other thing that gets me uh, bunchy is paying full price, and that's where discount code lefty summer comes into play. That's right, folks. You can enjoy this summer 
by saving 25% off any mask or accessory from CPAPsupplies.com. Oh, excuse me, Jocelyn, like what, uh, what can you save on? You can save on pretty much anything. In fact, now that summer's here, you're probably working on your beach tan. And to get a proper tan, you need to let the light in. So if you're using a full face mask, maybe consider something like a hybrid under the nose Evora full face mask. That way you can let the top of your nose tan to match your forehead. Oh, excuse me, Jocelyn. What if you have a, a, a forehead hat tan? <laughs> then you take off your hat too. Oh, that, that makes sense, Jocelyn. Thank you. So do me a favor, head on over to CPAPsupplies.com, throw something in your car, use discount code Lefty Summer, save yourself 25% off. You're welcome. I don't know if you noticed, but that transition was so smooth. Let's get back to the computer. Now, these are some of the comments from the O2 wearable that I received after doing it. I showed O2 wearables and sleep, not needed, not important, inaccurate, false sense of hope. And here's the types, I, I, I said it before, I'll say it again, that guys, you, you guys piss me off. That, that's, what, that, that's what it is. All right, I use it to increase my confidence that quitting CPAP was a right move and to catch any potential relapse. We have some comments here. You didn't listen to the video. I actually did. What do you think I missed? And then this is the wisest comment yet. In my honest opinion, if you quit CPAP, you will know it was a right move when you wake up in the morning feeling like someone kicked your patootie all night. Christian Cat Channel, I censored that. And you have a throbbing headache. Might be your sign that you need a CPAP and maybe a sleep study. And then Sabrithius says, you can have all sorts of breathing abnormalities detrimental to your sleep called quite a detrimental to your sleep quality that do not appear as desaturation at all. I fell into this trap myself back in 2015. Now, if you go back to this, potentially look at all these arousals, all these awakenings, there's probably not gonna be oxygen desaturations associated. You're gonna be wondering, God, why am I so tired? Why, why is my AHI so low? And why do I feel like garbage? It's, it's because it's bad information. That's simply it. Then we have uh, Dr. X-ring here. I like knowing the precise data for my O2 ring. I also get heart rate data and movement data. I know I don't need it, but I like it. Fair comment, fair, very fair comment. Thanks for posting this and for those whose discretionary income might be tight. So they like heart rate data you definitely cannot get just from the CPAP machine, but movement data you actually can. Let me go ahead and go back to this. So you see every one of these spikes here again? Each and every one of these is movement. And I can even tell you, this one's a position change or a big full body adjustment, as is this one, as is this one, as is this one. This one is not, they're staying in the same position, but there's movement. We have movement here, no position change, movement here, no position change, movement here, no position change, and again, movement here, no position change. You can see the difference. You're gonna get this like flat spot with a large hump in front of it. That's a movement with a position change. Every time I have a sleep study that I'm scoring, person moves on those or does like a very big full body adjustment, but almost nine times out of 10 body position change. And then DM done. Is this video a dig at CPAP reviews, a video from about a year ago? I don't know what review or what video you're talking about from CPAP reviews from Nick. No idea what you're talking about. Um, I know he does like the O2 wearables. I do not. I just think they're a waste. He has a different opinion. He's certainly welcome to that. But I'll tell you that Nick does have a really nice platform over there. If you check out sleep HQ, really nice tool for sharing full nights of data with people. For example, some people wanna show me data, their data, their full night, not just screenshots. You can upload your data to Sleep HQ. I'm not sure about all the pricing options. I know there is a free version, but you're able to share that with me. You're able to share that with other people. So on that CPAP reviews or Nick says, hey, I'm loving that salt and pepper Afro Gramps. Really appreciate the Sleep HQ shout outs. So Nick finds that the Rings movement data is beneficial for patients with experiencing positional sleep apnea. My only thing on this is I, I would push back that you don't, we, don't, we don't really know exactly what position they're in. We just know that they moved. So really, I would say that you can still get this from either Sleep HQ data or Oscar reporting data from the machine, either way. And then Nick also mentions he, he finds that it serves as an excellent screening tool for sleep apnea. Um, it does for sleep apnea, and he mentions without the hassle of doctor visits, and lab visits. 
It will do that for serious obstructive sleep apnea. So if you have what's called an oxygen desaturation index, that actually very much matches your apnea hypopnea index. But again, I go back to this. It doesn't get these subtle events. So if you're someone with a high or a low AHI and a high RDI, you're gonna be wondering, God, why am I so tired? My AHI is so low, why am I tired? It's probably because you have a lot of respiratory effort related arousals that are not gonna be picked up by an O2 ring or by even a home sleep study and certainly not by a CPAP machine. But then he adds, uh, do you need it? Absolutely not. And, and you don't, but it, it can be a useful tool for some people. I personally think folks at high elevation, it's probably more beneficial for, but if you're trying to look at really small events, micro events like RIRAS, upper area resistance syndrome, it, it's really not the tool for you at all. Alrighty, Papper Snappers, the angry energy I had at the beginning of the video, totally gone, very therapeutic for me. Certainly hope you understand my position now. I do appreciate any comments on the subject. If you wanna have a pap therapy analysis with me, check out axgsleepdiagnostics.com. Thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters, YouTube members, as well as cpapsupplies.com. Greatly appreciate the sponsorship. Clean your stinky mask with some Mask Bright, available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick Thanks, butter, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chengtu Chen, Edward Steiner, Erin Stevenson, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks, buddy, to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and other stuff. <laughs>